Hello everybody and welcome back to another awesome coding tutorial. So in this video today we'll be building this HTML form validation login and the reason why I like it so much is because of how colorful and how decorative it looks. It's probably my favorite projects I've built so far. So let's get started. The first thing we'll do is get rid of all this code so we can start from scratch. Well actually let's just go onto this new file and the first thing we'll do is create a div and give an ID of container. This will store all of our HTML elements within it. And the first thing I'll create will be an H1. Now I just opened up a live server and I'll just call it HTML form validation and then a BR tag and then the word login. So now if we save and refresh, we have those words appearing on our browser. And then once we're done with that, we can go grab this right here if we want to use these links, then you'll have to copy and paste this link into your program in order for it to work. So it's basically the Font Awesome link. So you can just go to fontawesome.com and then you can get that link. But if you want to, I can even link this in, this in the description below for you guys. So now, if we try doing, I'll take this one first, so highlight that, paste it. Now you see that this icon appears, but let's say I got rid of this link, then now it doesn't work. So you'll need this link in order for the icon to actually appear on your browser. And then underneath this i tag, I'll create a span and give it an ID of username. And I'll just call it username as well. And then after that, I'll create a div and give it a class of pseudo. You'll see why in a minute. And then within the pseudo class, I can create an input and give an ID of username input and the placeholder will be type your username and I don't really normally use classes in HTML unless I'm creating two or three of the same elements so that's why I'm gonna do that and then a BR tag which forces it to go into the new line and then we can take this one right here the lock icon so paste it right here and then underneath that I can create a span give an ID of password and I'll name it password as well so now if we refresh the word password is right next to the lock icon to the combination lock and then after that I can create another div also with the class of pseudo this is what I mean when I use classes in HTML and I'll create an input as well and call it password so type equals password so that when you type your password into there you can only see these black dots and if you wanted to here, then you'll just have to click the eye and if you just want to go back to dots then you can just click the eye again and just toggle back and forth that's basically how that works and then give this an ID of password input and the placeholder will be type your password and now we save we have the placeholder right there and then underneath this div I'm gonna create one more BR tag and then a button just give an ID of button then I'll just call it login and then I'll create an a tag with the href of this hashtag song which then I'll give an ID of forgot password because you know how on most registration forms it has the blue link that says forgot password so if you forgot your password you can click on it and it'll renew your password for you that's what that's what we're trying to do here. so if I type forgot password with the question mark you'll notice that it appears as a link that's because we're using an a tag and then I'll create a span and give an ID of option ID equals option so this will give you the option of signing in with Google Twitter or Facebook so that's what I'm gonna do and I'll just name it or sign up using and then another BR tags and we'll get our Facebook icon so we'll just copy this paste it in here and now we have our Facebook icon and let's just do the same for these two as well get rid of this text right here and get rid of this and now if we refresh we have all three of those icons right next to each other at the bottom of our browser and then I can create one more div with the ID of result and I'll just leave it blank for now and another container and give it an ID of container 2 and in here we'll just create a, a bunch of bubble divs that's what the, the class name will be so span.bubble 
So that's going to be the class for each span, and then I want 12 of those, so I'll just do span.bubble times 12. And now we have it printed out for us instantly. And now all we have to do is put them on different lines to make it easier to read. And for each bubble, I'm going to give it another class name as well as bubble1, bubble2, so that we can distinguish between each of them. And now once we're done doing that, we can get started with the CSS since this is all the HTML we need. Hopefully that wasn't too overwhelming and confusing for you. If so, you can just rewatch the video again. But anyways, now we can get started with the CSS. So the first thing I'll style will be I'll grab the everything selector and then give everything on, on my browser a uh, font family of sans serif. And then the body will have a background image. It's not actually an image, it's just a linear gradient. And I misspelled background. I, then I'll do linear gradient to right RGB 24, 216, 216. And then I'll do RGB. 214321 and then I'll do input and I'll give it a background color of transparent so now you'll notice this white rectangle goes away and now it's sort of transparent and give it a width of 100% height 100% as well so it takes up 100% of the available space and then after that we can style input.fab that's the name of our icon so we're basically styling the social media icons and give them a cursor pointer so when we hover over it our cursor will turn into this hand same thing with our inputs that's why we separated them with commas and then after that we can do button and then input so we're gonna give both of them a border of none so now both of them don't have any border which looks much better now then dot pseudo I'm going to give those pseudo divs a border of 2 pixels solid gray, transition 0.1 seconds, linear, so it will transition nice and smoothly. And then the border top color will be transparent, border left color will be transparent, border right color, right color will be transparent as well. And now all the border disappears except for this bottom border right here. And now what we want to do is give it a hover property. So I'll do pseudo colon hover. And when we hover over it, we'll do we'll increase the border by 2.5 pixels. Solid black. The border top color will still be transparent. So actually we should just copy all of this right here. Paste it in here like that. Now when we hover over it, you'll see that it becomes much darker and a little more thicker than before. And then I'll do input focus and button focus. And focus just means when you click on it. So when you click on it, you don't want the outline to appear. So now when you click on it, you don't see any outline. And I should also give my button a cursor of pointer as well. And then I'll style my container, my first container, not container 2 yet. And give it a position of absolute top 10%, left 34%, background color RGBA 255, 255, 255, 0.8. So this is basically white with an 80% opacity. So if I change this to 1, which is its normal color, you'll notice that it's a little harsher, but when you put something less than 1, like 0.8, it blends in with the background and looks much more colorful and not as harsh. And then we can do border radius 7 pixels so we're going to round its corners off by 7 pixels so it's no longer 90 degrees. And then I'll do padding 30 pixels, height 390 pixels and we also have to style our button so I'll give it a border radius of 20 pixels with 100% height 40 pixels background image linear gradient it's basically the same color as the body so I'll just copy this right here and paste that in for the button so I'll just paste it like that and now you'll notice that it looks sort of transparent on the form because it's the same color 
and you can change it to whatever color you want. I just think this looks kind of cool in my opinion. And I'll make the text color white so it shows up much better and give it a font size of 2 REM which is the equivalence of 32 pixels since 1 REM is 16 pixels. Top 23 pixels. And now once we're done with that we can do button hover so we're going to give our button a hover property and when we hover over it we'll, get, we'll scale it by 1.1. So it's going to increase in size by 10%. And the border will be 2 pixels solid blank. So now when you hover over it, it gets bigger. And it also gets a border. And for our H1, we can do text align center. So we just want it to be in the center of our container. That's basically that what text align does. And then for each of our social media icons, which both, which all three of them has a class of dot fab, I'm going to move it left 86 pixels. And obviously it's not working because I'm not doing position relative. Then top 30 pixels, which will just move it away from the top 30 pixels. And I'm going to scale it by, scale it by 2.3 pixels. Just 2.3 then I'll do margin 20 pixels and then after we're done with that we can style our forgot password element and give it a font size of 0.8 rem so 0.8 times 16 is roughly 13 so it's going to have 13 pixels for its font size and then I'll do left to 36 pixels bottom 60 pixels and it's not working because we forgot to give it a position of relative now it should move to the right place which is right here and also we should even get rid of the you see how it's underlined we don't want that so we can do a that's we're selecting our a tag and the text decoration will be none so now you'll notice that it the underline goes away and the color will be black and then after that we can style our option ID give it a top of 20 pixels left 106 pixels I'll do position relative for that as well and then after that we can style our result and give it a bottom value of 135 pixels and to see and to see actually where it's ending up we can just type in some text like hello okay so it's at the bottom left corner so we'll have to do position relative and now it'll move up yep so that's just we're just gonna keep that there for now to help us see where it ends up in case it goes somewhere we don't want it to go and then after that we can style our bubble and give each of them a border radius of 50% background image will be linear gradient to right RGB 24 216 216 RGB 214 3 221 and obviously our bubble doesn't appear on our browser yet because we haven't given it any dimensions so let's give it a width of 90 pixels, height 70 pixels, margin 14 pixels, box shadow, inset 003 pixel white, and then I'll also give it an animation of animate, that's going to be the name of it, 0.8s, which is just short for 0.8 seconds, that's how long it will run, the last, ease, infinite so it will go on forever that's why I typed infinite and then after that we can style our bubble our result div the option forgot password dot fab hashtag button and give them all a position of relative and now we can call our animation by typing keyframes and the name of our animation which is animate and at 0% we want to 
bottom we want the bottom value of it to be 20 pixels at 12.5 percent it's going to move from the bottom 40 pixels so 12.5 percent is one eighth of the animation so that's why so that's what I'm doing I'm going to change it at every one eighth increment intervals of the animation so I'm going to change it at one at every time it finishes one eighth of the animation so at 25 percent the bottom value would be 60 pixels 37.5 percent the bottom value will be um, 80 pixels and then at 50 percent bottom will be 60 pixels so now it's going back down 62.5 percent it will be 40 pixels 75 percent it will be 20 pixels 87.5 percent it will be zero and then once it's complete it's going to be negative 20 actually you know what um our animation isn't appearing in our browser for some reason i don't really know why and i can't seem to find the error so i'll just get rid of it and get rid of this container as well so we don't need it and now we can get started with the uh, javascript since our animation isn't working i don't know why though but Hopefully it'll work for you guys and you guys will be able, be able to figure out the problem. So I'm going to create a variable and name it button. Then I'll do document.getElementById. So I'm storing the button in the button variable. Do the same for my result. And I'm going to give my button an event listener so that when you click on it, it will run some sort of function I'm going to give it. So I'm going to create a few more variables in this function. This one will be password. And the ID was password input dot value. And we'll just do the same thing for our username. Username input dot value. Then we can do var speech equals new speech synthesis utterance so this speech API allows us for our computer to talk allows our computer to talk so we'll give it a speech dot rate of 1.3 so we'll be talking 30 percent faster than it usually does and I'm going to create some conditional statements my first one will be if password dot length is less than 8 then result.innerHTML equals the password. The password must be at least eight characters. And we'll do result.style.color equals red. Result.style.fontWeight equals bold. And the speech.text, which is what the computer is going to say, will be the password length. The password must be at least eight characters long. And you probably know what we're going to do for our next else if statement. So we're going to do else if password.length is greater than 15. So our password has to be between 8 and 15. So if it's greater than 15, then result dot inner HTML equals the password can't be longer than 15 characters. And I'll give it a style of, I'm going to style its color and make it red as well. And give it a font weight of bold and then the speech.text will say the password can't be longer than 15 characters and then one last else if statement so this one will be else if password dot length 
is greater than or equal to 8 and password dot length is less than or equal to 15 so this is checking to see if our password matches its requirement so if it does then result dot inner html equals your password is valid and then result dot style dot text align equals center results dot style dot color equals green because it's working so it's going to turn green result dot style dot font weight it's also going to be bold so actually this is kind of redundant we don't even have to keep typing this over and over again so we'll just type it once in the C in the CSS so we can find our result element I'll just call it so result and I'll just do font weight bold and make sure you don't forget to type this very important line in order for your computer to actually start talking so we'll do window dot speech synthesis dot speak it will speak the speech so it's going to speak this variable right here the password must be at least eight characters so now long we save and refresh you'll let's say I just type in my username I'll just type in candy and for my password I'll just type my last name and maybe some more characters so that is valid now it's gonna say my password is valid but it's not speaking it because I forgot to do speech dot text equals your password is valid or we can just do result dot inner HTML so let's just I so now your password is valid now it's gonna say my password is valid and I should have thought of this instead of writing all of this I could have just done speech dot text equals result dot inner HTML and it'll work just fine because look when I type in a bunch of characters that is more than 15 the password can't be longer than 15 characters so I can get rid of this as well and save me some more lines of code and just type result dot inner HTML so now if I just typed in two or three characters for my password the password must be at least eight characters so this is it for the project I hope you guys thought this was cool because it, and if you have any questions about the speech API or things like that post them down in the comment section below and I'll get to you as soon as possible thanks for watching I hope to see you again in my next video